Hello y'all, my name is Scott Grove of GroovyMusicLessons.com. They call me Dr. Groovy. That's right, Dr. Groovy. The man, the myth, the legend. <laughs> okay, I have several, several instructional videos out and have been out for a long time. And if you guys haven't heard of me yet, by golly, you have now. Um, today I am going to teach those of you who grabbed this lesson anyway, how to play the McNally strum stick. This guy. Okay, the one I'm using is the big one that is actually tuned in G. So this is specifically designed for this um, particular instrument. Okay, they are offered in different tunings. They can be played the exact same way, no matter which tuning you get. I often have this one tuned different, but this is a three-stringed instrument. As you can see, or as you know if you have one already, and they are tuned for, this is going to be for people who know how to play other instruments or who have never played anything in their life because this is one of those instruments that is pretty much extremely difficult to make a mistake on. It was quite um, clever the way the tuning was done. So starting at the top string, meaning up towards your face, uh, the note is called a G. The next string down is called a D. And then the last string is another G, just like the first one, but it's called an octave higher. So they're both the same note, but one is definitely higher. So you got two G strings, and the middle one is D. When you play them all together, okay, so it's got quite the uh, sound between a mandolin and a banjo with these little guys. If anybody ever would record with them, they record really well and make for a really unique sound on your recordings. This here is the ultimate travel instrument. You can pack this thing anywhere and take it into the mountains, take it out hiking anywhere, way better than all the little guitars and so forth, and have just as much fun with it. And again, as I mentioned, it's hard to make a mistake. So, um, really quickly, uh, just to show you what these things can actually do. I'll bring this puppy right on up and show you, and let's show the, as much of it as I can in this particular shot. Okay, so you can go way up here. Okay, so all kinds of crazy things. Um, you can do bluegrass music, old folk music, even country music. You can change chords. Okay, so we're going to do that kind of stuff, playing it with and without a pick. So, um, all kinds of fun things are going to happen. I advise anybody who is ever going to play a stringed instrument to buy an electronic tuner of some sort, whether it be these little guys, you can get them at Walmart or your nearest music store, anything that has a microphone on it to pick these up. Okay, and again, since these are tuned with regular notes, meaning there are no sharp notes, no flat notes. They only put these little lines, which are called frets, these metal pieces, where they would make actual whole notes. We actually have like G, A, B, C, D, E, then there is an E flat here, then F, G, then A, B, C, D, all the way up again. So it takes a lot of all those sharps and flats that people are afraid of, takes them out of there. So. Anybody of any age can play this thing right away, in a day, with no problem. They also make these little clip-on tuners right here for the top of any instrument. It's just called a headstock tuner, or a neck tuner, if you were to ever ask about them. But you can see how easy. See, I need to tune up a little bit. So when it goes green, I am in tune.
So you sit there and turn those and you know right when to stop. So anyway, get away. Once again, I am Scott Grove, Dr. Groovy of Groovy Music Lessons. Again, this is the McNally Strumstick, the big one in the key of G that you will read about from wherever you found it at. And I'm going to teach you every possible thing about playing this thing. So sit back and get ready for a fun ride. Howdy folks, Dr. Groovy here. Uh, glad to see you uh, continuing along. Okay, again, the strum stick. Um, yours should have come with a little cord that ties up here somewhere, anywhere on the tuning keys or through any of these holes up here. It really won't matter where it gets tied to. Then there's a place at the bottom if it's already not done for you. Okay. Now, the thing is we have to get these puppies tuned up first. Okay, again, like I mentioned at the beginning, uh, we will have to find um, a tuner. Hopefully you went out and got one, because if not, it's kind of a pain. But then again, you can always go online, and there will be tuners there that will give you notes, or if you, and then you can try to tighten up the tuning keys here to match the notes, which is kind of difficult. Um, the electronic tuners for $12 are... <laughs> super investment. You can't go wrong and your stuff will always sound better. But you can go online if you have a microphone and play it and it will pick up the notes as well and you can tune it on there for absolutely free. So um, find you a site that has a tuner for free on there. Again, like I said, you could get one of these and you just turn it on and when you play into it, let's see, I'll just turn this puppy on and if I was to play a note, it has a little light up here that tells me if it shows I'm sharp. The sharp symbol means that the peg up here or the tuner is too tight, so you just need to loosen that note a little bit. But it also has to tell you the note, so that should be a G note. That'll be the highest string or the one towards the floor. So it's showing G, and it's going to be... Um, it's a little sharp, so I will ch tune it. It's still a little bit sharp. Okay, now I'm, I'm going to do my B string. I'm sorry, my D string. <laughs> and it's a little flat. Okay, so I'm going to tighten it up. And I tightened it a little too tight. Okay, so you tighten them right up here at the top, those keys. And try to tune up with that or the other type I showed you, which is probably what most of you will use. I've got a whole bunch. There's one over here made by um, IntelliTouch. Nice little unit. Uh, there's all kinds of different ones. The one I'm using here is what most people end up getting. It's called a Snark. Just like Shark, but with an N in there. Hit the button. It will come on, little light there. You simply clip it to the top of your instrument and then face the string on it towards you. So if I'm going to play that skinny string all the way down at the bottom of the floor, the G string, and you want it to go till it's green and it says G. <laughs> okay. So if it goes past it, loosen it up a little bit. Now my D, it looks pretty good. Now the very top one, the G, is low. So you see how low that is? I'll tighten it. I'm almost there. And keep hitting it if you need to. Don't just hit it once and let it ring. There you go. We're right in there. And it should sound like that. Um, and don't forget to turn these off. Some of them have an automatic shut off. Some of them don't. So you might come back to a dead battery. Okay, let's get it down here on our instrument here where we can get started on this. Okay. Now, again... Dun, da, da, da. There we go. I can see everything now, and hopefully you can too. Again, we have just the three strings. We have two G strings, the two outer strings, so the one, the top one. So I'm going to call them one, two, and three. One, two, three. So your first string, second string, third string. And again, if uh, some of you guys are more advanced and not beginners, hey, it's cool. You can uh, hang with me, and we'll go slow. And 
let everybody else catch up. Your fingers will be numbered the same way. First finger, second, third, fourth. Okay? So I will tell you to use your first finger and tell you where to put it on which number string. String one, two, or three. Or, if you guys remember, I'll be throwing out the name of the string. So you have a G string, D as in dog, and back another G. So I'll say the top G string or the bottom. Okay? Things like that. I'll let you know as we go. Okay. The thing that is great is um, chords. Uh, generally, there are three chords. Chords are a group generally uh, made up of three notes. It's actually the definition is just two or more chords or two or more notes put together um, will actually be the definition of a chord. But it's nice to have three, which is why they put three strings on here. <laughs> okay? And we'll find all kinds of ways to have some fun. So. Um, the way that they made these, like I said, were to try to make an instrument that nobody could really make a mistake on. It could always sound like great music. Um, the first set of chords I'm going to show you, this will get you to play all kinds of songs. Um, okay, is the, just the G chord, which is just playing nothing. You have to hold the neck, okay? Best way to do it is with your thumb and all of your fingers if you can. And just hold the whole thing there like this. Okay, even though you got a strap on it, it's going to want to tilt upwards and do all kinds of weird stuff. You have to hold it so it faces forward, flat against your belly, and you know, just hold it. You have to uh, tell this thing who's boss. Okay, so your thumb's important here, keep it on the top, and that will keep it kind of pushed down. And then your other fingers will be all wrapped around here, and your hand holds on to it since it's such an easy instrument to play. Um, and the body is so light, I like to keep it pressed up against my body, and a lot of the times keep my hand right here, next to my pinky, so the side of my hand, pressed up against the body right about here. So it holds it against my chunky self, okay? So it's good to hold it like at the side of your body, okay, if I'm standing straight at you. So if you want to hold it in front, that's fine, whatever is comfortable to you. If you want to use a pick. Um, grab a pick. Um, the real flimsy ones, do not use them. I would suggest uh, they have different gauges on them. This here is a 73 gauge or 0.73. Okay, so that's pretty much average for most people. So I wouldn't get anything really heavier or much lighter. See what you like, what feels good. Go to a music store and try different weights of picks. But that is generally the world standard for any instrument. Okay, if you get them too light, you're not going to get any volume out of your instrument and it's going to flop around. You need a little bit of actual authority over the strings. If it was real light, it'd be, you would never hear it and it's hard to hear it anyway. Okay, so hold it between whatever is going to work for you, but basically it is your first finger and your second finger of your right hand, if you're right-handed, and then your thumb on the other side, right in the middle. And you've got just oh, about that much sticking out, and that's how much is going to actually stick out as we rake it or strum across the strings. And remember, you can play one note at a time or strum it. Okay, so a strum is playing more than one string at a time. Here's picking it. What I'm playing right now, if you ever need to know the technical name of it, is arpeggio. <laughs> okay, which means it's a chord, but you're only playing one note at a time of it. So that's called an arpeggio. Do you need to know that? Nope, but for future reference. Otherwise, you are just strumming it. Okay, let's figure out how to do a strum on the G chord. I'm going to say... Um, okay, this here is going to be the easiest one to handle, I think, for you guys. Okay, so you're simply hitting the G string here on top. Then we're going to strum down and up. So... Okay, so top string, G string, 
by itself. That's why it's good to really plant your hand here. You have, you're going to be playing with your wrist. You see people that play guitar like this. That is actually not a good habit to get into because you'll lose a lot of control. So if you actually use your wrist and actually plant your hand like I showed you, you know, you see what's happening here. You can even lay it on here if you want on the back side of it. Okay. See, it's just my wrist and my fingers doing the thing. Your arm goes nowhere. This is the correct way to play all instruments. Okay. Except for piano. <laughs> okay. So the G string again. Pick down. Then strum down all three. And then back up all three. Okay. And just try that. Just keep doing that until you get it. Then come right back to the video and we'll continue. Don't be afraid to stop the video. Um, you never want to lag behind. So if it takes a day or so, yeah, it could take you a day or it could take you two seconds. Start slow. Just whatever it takes to get it right. Don't speed it up until you have it right. Okay, then you want to get it good and constant before you come back. I want you to at least get... about that fast. Now if you want to think about it, it's actually a horse gallop that I think about in my brain. So it's like, well if I should turn over and use it as drum. Boom chicka 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 boom Hi oh silver Okay, so there you go, you have your strum down. So get that one taken care of, and then um, come on back and see me, okay? Okay, now that you guys have the strumming down on our G chord, um, we're going to actually get three chords put together, and then we're going to do something with them. What's that mean? Well, I'll give you a preview, okay? Here is the G chord we were playing. Okay, I did a little embellishment there, just with the picking. So, um, remember that a instrument is something that is supposed to be expressive of you. Um, there are no rules. There are guidelines here. That's all I'm giving you are guidelines. I'm not going to say you must do this. It's just the way um, that I would teach you and the way I think is best for you. And that usually works pretty well. <laughs> but please explore it any way you want. If you want us to think of... I'm just putting my fingers on the strings but just not pushing down. It's, it's called muting it. M-U-T-E, like the mute on the TV. Just put my fingers on. Okay, just fun technique. But what I was going to talk about earlier, I get distracted easy, but it's good for you because you get to learn all kinds of crazy little things, is that we're going to be able to take and put our fingers on these other notes. Okay, so we haven't done any of this yet. Okay, now um, that will be sounding kind of like this. I'll show you how to do it in just a couple of seconds. Okay, so we'll be able to do that all over the place way before this video is even over because we have more than that to do. Okay, so that is your G chord. Now, if we take the whole entire thing, these here are called frets. F-R-E-T-S. Not F-A-R-T-S. F-R-E-T-S. Okay, little metal things here. Okay, we've got that one there. We've got one here. Then it's got a one here that's really short. Actually, what has happened from normal instruments, they're usually together like this, but they have taken them out of here. 
So they took it away so that they get, like I told you earlier, they get rid of all these notes that are called like G sharp and A flat and B flat and things like that that are no fun to play right off the bat because this is a fun instrument so we don't want to take the fun out. So what happens is if we take this, our G chord, okay, that's the highest letter in the alphabet that we're going to go up to. And the person who designed this, like, like I said, was very clever. He put these frets in so that if you take your finger and you put it on all three strings, you don't want to touch on top of that fret. You want to put it on all three strings like this, just straight across. That's called a bar. It's spelled B-A-R-R-E. Yep, that's the way it's spelled for some reason. B-A-R-R-E. So it's called a bar when you cover more than one string with the same finger. So you're covering all three strings. So G, like I said, is the highest note in the alphabet that names a chord or a note that we will ever use. It's actually G sharp, but since we don't have such things on this instrument, it doesn't matter. So we go from G, the end of the whole thing, to starting over. We bar at the first fret with our first finger. So take finger number one, first finger, place it not on top of, but behind the fret, as close as you can get to it so you can still see it. And then you have to push down so that all of the strings make contact with that. And then when you play, we want to play. Make sure you can hear all three strings. So you can play them out like that. So you just pluck the notes, okay, or arpeggiate them. Remember it's called arpeggio? So if you play it that way, you're arpeggiating the notes. <laughs> okay, you don't have to remember this stuff, but it's here if you ever want it. So that's the best way to make sure that you've got this actually planted hard enough against there. Now you only have to press as hard as it needs to be in order to make the notes happen. So you're playing a note, nothing happens, push a little harder, keep pushing harder until it happens. And that has to happen with all three strings. They all have to go through clear. If you don't get close enough to it and you're way back here, it'll just do that. If you get it in the middle, Remember before when I said fret, F-R-E-T? Well, you will hear that sound, F-A-R-T. <laughs> it makes that poop sound. So if you get it back here, no good, bring it up here. You can't push hard enough until you get close to it. Then you get right, not on top of it, but right before it, right there. Then you'll hear them all. If it hurts a little bit, that's fine. Um, it will. <laughs> After you get used to playing it for a couple of days, then it will quit hurting forever, as long as you keep playing. You'll develop a little callus on here. Nothing will look ugly. It'll look like normal. Um, see, right now I've got a little red marks, but that'll go away in about one minute. Okay? But your fingers will get tougher. Okay, so this is the secret to everything. So we have G, the G chord. Next one, we start the alphabet. Okay, right here is where we start the whole alphabet. Let's go through it. All three. That's A. So that's the whole A chord. Just play one finger on all three strings. Then you move it all the way up to the next bar, which is a fret. And get it close enough. No, 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 no. No, that's the F-A-R-T. Okay, that's B. So we had G, which is the end of everything. Then we start all over. A, B. Go right between the skinny one, C. I bet you can guess what's next. All the way up to this one, D, E. Okay, now F. I'm oh, sorry, I'm still on E. <laughs> next one up is F. Now they did put one sharp on here, which is this one. Because they got three little skinny or four little skinny ones in a row. So you got E, then F is the first of these three holes that you put it in. So F. Then it goes actually to F sharp, and then back to G again. So if you're back to G, 
That means you should be the same thing as when we didn't put a finger on it at all. You understand that? So it's G here. It's just way high. Now I take it off and it's a low G. Put it back on. Just same as this is a G. That's a G. Now it's... So guess what's next? G, then A, B, C, D. But we're never going to play it there for now. Okay, so that's the way this works. So we only do have the one sharp. Why they put it in there, uh, we'll find out at some point. Okay? But it is that one where there's these four frets, but there's three places in between to play it. So you have E, then when they all get smushy together here, you get F, then F sharp, which means it's higher in pitch than the F, right directly in between F and G, they put another fret there. Okay, now that's actually why it's here. If you know a lot of songs, or have heard a lot of songs, they can end like that. So they wanted to put a fret there so that you could actually make this particular thing happen. Check it out. Hear that? It's just a cool way to end things, and that's how you do it. F, F sharp, G. Okay? So that will be later or now, whenever, whatever you want to do. Like I said, I'm just here to instruct. Now, I'm big on tea, so if you see me drinking iced tea all the time, hey, have some yourself. Okay, so now we have the chords. I want you to work on three of them. Okay, I want you to work on G, C, and D. You're like, what? Okay, let me show them to you and then you, we'll take a break again and let you go work on those. I want you to keep, you know, it's just G when it's all by itself. Now I want G, C, and D. So we got G, so we got to figure out where C is. And then you'll have to start remembering where these are at. Yeah, it can all be at fun and games. Well, it can. It's not hard to do the alphabet all the way through G. <laughs> a, B, C, D, E, F, G. Okay, I'm done for the day. Don't you wish life was that easy? Okay, so again, G, C, and D. So we got G already. We don't have to do anything. With our strumming pattern. Boom, chicka, boom, chicka, boom, chicka, boom, chicka, boom, chicka, boom, boom, boom. <laughs> okay, now C, how do we get there? G, then we start the alphabet over. A at the first fret. Make sure it sounds good. B, then C. So you're just going through the alphabet. Okay, so remember, it's where the two little ones are. That's C. It's always going to be, so learn it. That's C. So you got G and C. It's the first place where there's two frets close to each other. So you've got G, C, and I asked for G, C, and D. What's after C in the alphabet? That's right, D. So you got G, C, and D. Okay? Now here's the way I want you to remember this. Um, number one, I'm going to give you actually two different things. Number one, I want you to do the strumming we talked about with the G. Then C. Okay, you're going to do that four whole times. One and a two and a three and a four and a... Okay, that's what we're actually going to think in our head now. One and a two and a three and a four and a... I'm not saying anaconda. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so one and a two and a three and a four and a... Then we go one and a two. Because in music, everything is done in fours. Unless we're doing a waltz, which will be threes. One, two, three, two, two, three. One, two, three, two, two, three. That's a waltz. So you can go one, two, three, one. Like that. But you can remember that for later. I'll bring it up again. So one and a two and a three and a four and a C and a two and a three and a four and back to G. One and a two and a three 
and a four, now D and a one, and a two, and a three, and a four, and a, okay? That's what I want you to do. This here is just the way that probably 90% of the songs in the world actually are written. Okay, they're written in three chord things, and this here is the most popular way. Actually, you can do so many songs already, but you don't know it. Okay, so it's one and a two and a three and a four and a C and a two and a three and a four and a G and a two and a three and a four and a D and a two and a three and a four and a G and a two and a three and a four and a C and a two and a three and a two okay four and a G and a two and a D and a G. Okay, now what I did at the very end there is I did what was called a split bar <laughs> or a split measure. I did G and a two and a D and a four and a back to G. Um, some song, a lot of songs do that. They do the first time, do everything four times, but then at the very end they do the first one. Okay that note or the first chord of the song but then when it comes to the last chord of the song they'll split it up like the second time around almost every song does that for some reason so one and a two and a three and a four and a C and a three and a four and a G and a two and a three and a four and a D two and a three and a four and a G two and a three and a four and a C I'm gonna split them up Four and a G and a two and a D and a two and a G and a two and a three and a four and a That's another reason they put that up there. Because you couldn't have that note, F sharp. I know you guys already want to learn that. That's all the way up to the high G. So way up to that fret up there, where we did earlier, find your way all the way up to the G. So we're going to go on that high G string down here at the bottom. Then your first finger on the second string, which is your D string. Play it twice. Then put your middle finger or your second finger one more fret up. And take it back off. So you got... Okay, that takes a bit of practice. I told you I'd go all over the place, but it's fun. I want to give you some other fun stuff to do. All work and no play just stinks. <laughs> then it's just going to be on the high, high G string, or the very skinniest one towards the floor, to the F sharp, which is just one fret backwards. Okay? Or you can do both strings. That's both strings together. And I'm muting them with this hand. That same part that's leaning against here. Or you can use your hands here, but go. <laughs> or you can let it ring. Kind of cool. Okay, so that was one way was the two and a three and a four and a one. Okay, with these three chords again, there was rock and roll back in the 1950s. Elvis Presley. And everybody else in the world played these songs. Okay. Um, I want you to thank one, two, three, one, two, one, two, three, one, two. One, two, three, one, two, one, two, three, one, two. Can you say that with me again? Here we go. Yeah. One, two, three, one, two, 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 one, two, three, one, two. Okay, we're going to all be going to be down strokes or down picks, but they're all going to be strumming. So I want one, two, three with our G, then two notes on the C, just like we're going one, two, three, one, two, then the D for three, one, two, three, one, two. So every single time that C only gets two notes, but listen, it's that 50s music. So G, one, two, three, C, one, two. D, one, two, three, C only gets two again. One, two, one, two, three. One, two, one, two, three. One, two. Now, if you can, I would love for you to use your second finger 
when you do the D. So you got G, one, two, three. Now your first finger doing the bar all the way across. Right here at these two skinny ones. So that's actually your um, C chord. Then the D, try to use your middle finger. For finger number two to do the D chord. So one, two, three. One, two, one, two, three. One, two. You might, you have to use your third finger. Whatever, you know, because the smaller people will have not quite as much of a stretch to get away up there. Whatever finger works for you, even finger four or your pinky, just try something different instead of using the one finger all the time. Because we got to use these for other things. Check this out. So that while that's there, we we can't, if we put, and put something else here and we're playing it with our pinky, we can't put any other fingers up there because that's our last. <laughs> so we got a lot of things to do. So again, one, two, three. Now change fingers. Okay, some old rock and roll that there's um kind of a song. It's been done. Um that's actually the music to so many songs back in those days. But if you, or if you're old enough to remember a song called Louie Louie, is the name of the song. Louie Louie. Um, check it out here on YouTube or anywhere. Um, find it. Or if you're a young person, have your parents load it up for you. And you can play possibly right along with it if it's in the right key. If it's in G. <laughs> if it's not in G, then I'll show you a little later how to find out different keys that songs are in but right now we're just just learning so we'll make it easy so that's that's gonna be the fun one but get both of those for me really good before you come back again last time two and a three and a four and a one and a two and a three and a four and a one and a two and a three and a four, different finger, and a one, and a two, and a three, and a four, and a one, and a two, and a three, and a four, and a one, and a two, and a three, and a four, and a one, and a two, and a three, and a four, and a one, and a whatever you want to do. It's music and the fun one. Make sure you want to dance. You can get all kinds of funky. If you start feeling something, play it. If you want to go put your fingers on here, if you want to turn it around. And whatever you got, uh, make it all yours. Have fun with it. You can even play over top of it. Check this out. <laughs> okay, anyway, go get those taken care of, and I'll come back and show you some more stuff. All right, catch you in a second. Yeah, you're back. You didn't want to see my goofy face, I know. <laughs> I'm, for people that want to know, I'm half of a hundred years old. That's right, I'm 50. I'm older than the hills, folks. In case anybody was wondering, but I'm what's called a hippie. Or, yeah, a hippie is good enough. But always remember, Dr. Groovy is what I like to go by. Some of my friends named me that. When I was on YouTube, they called me Dr. Groovy. <laughs> I like it. Now, there's so many things around this studio in here that it says Dr. Groovy on it that people have made for me from guitar straps to pictures to everything great stuff um, little trinket boxes okay enough talk about me okay now we're gonna do start adding some notes in okay and then I will actually show you some other keys to play in how to find all the other chords which you already know how to go G A B C D E F then after F yeah you're stuck in that little place F F sharp G then A, B, C, D again. Okay, 
So um, it is important to try to remember which ones are which by looking at them. So if you've been practicing as much as you're supposed to have been, you'll know that G is always open. And C is that first set of little skinny area there between those two frets. Okay, and remember if your instrument sounds out of tune, make sure you always tune again. Okay, tune often and get a little, um, oh they sell these little yellow rags at the music stores or whatever, um, but there's no lint on them. They're just a, actually what's called cheesecloth. Um, it's not a regular wash rag at all. Don't ever use that, but just take them and wipe your strings a little bit with them. Get your sweat off there. If you can, maybe put it underneath your string and then actually wrap it, wrap it around your string. Then you can just go back and forth and clean the underside too. Okay, so always try to do that after you play so that they don't rust. Because when they rust, they break. Okay, you don't want that. They're going to break eventually because that's what they do. Plus, guitar string companies, they need to sell more strings. So, I don't know if you're using guitar strings or banjo strings on yours. Depends on which ones they want to sell you. <laughs> okay, I'm going to check my tuning again. So let's check yours if you want. Because I'm definitely checking mine. You can never tune enough. Okay, I'm going to play my skinny E down there, or skinny G down there at the bottom. This right in there. It turned on right on the green. My D is flat. means I need to tighten it up. Make the note go higher. So I'm twisting that little thing until it stays in the green and doesn't go red at all. Either way, good. Now my very top G. See how it's got a little bit of red? Means I still need to go tight a little, to a little tighter, make it because it's flat. So it needs to go a little sharper until it stays in the green. No more red. Uh, it went the other way just a little bit. So I'll back it down and there I am. Close enough and then shut off your tuner. Again, if you just do it on the computer, fine and dandy. Okay, now you have all those chords. Now we're going to learn what to do with them. Okay, so let's get rid of my face again. All right, we're back home where we're supposed to be. Okay. Um, with all these chords now, when you're going, okay, we can um, embellish these, which means fancy them up, okay? So, this over here so you don't have to spare it. a bunch of guitar chords laying on the ground for the electric guitars. Okay, so now we get to use all these other fingers. Okay, so this one's going to be a lot of stuff, but... This is what makes it fun, okay? So we're in G, okay? So what we're going to do is we can use these first two frets. So the whole part here of A and B, all of those notes, every one of them on each string. So I want you to go G, which means open. What open means is you don't have any fingers on the neck. I mean, you can have it there to hold your neck, but you're not pushing down any strings on the neck, okay? So you're not pushing down any strings on any frets. So G here at the top, and then go one. So that's first finger on the first fret. Then two and two means second finger, second fret. So you got... So try to get that to happen. Okay, you're like, well, why did you make me go... And I come back and we're not doing that. We're actually going to incorporate this into it or mix them together. Okay, so that you can go four and one, two, three, four, four, one, and two, and three, and four, and one, and two, and three, and three. See, so we're adding stuff to it. So this is how we add it. Now, when we put these fingers on here, what we want to do is use the very tip of your finger. I mean the tip. Not your fingernail, but the tip. Because other strings that are underneath there, you might want to go like one, two, three, 
and then hit the string right below it. Okay, if you hear that, that means the underside of your finger is touching the string under it. So you got to really curve it and make it look like that, like a tunnel, like a choo-choo train tunnel. So see how that curves like that? So if you point, see how my finger gets all wrinkly there because my skin's getting loose because I'm getting old? Maybe yours looks like that too. I can tighten mine up, maybe. <laughs> or I can just bend it so you can't see my wrinkles. There you go. <laughs> okay, so really try to make it look like a choo-choo train tunnel because that's what it is. To see this next string actually has to go under it and through the tunnel, both strings, so that you can play the other strings and they still make noise because if this was laying on them, it would actually sound like that right there if you're not doing it right. Okay, so you need to make sure that all three strings can make some noise so you know you have it right. So. So every finger you use has to be a choo-choo train tunnel. Okay, so you can go one and a two and a three, two, one and a two and a three and a four and a one and a two and a three and a four. So you see what I'm doing? On the number, instead of the and a, we're changing frets. One and a two and a three and a four and a one and a two and a three and a four okay so pretty cool so that's the easiest thing we're going to do one and a two and a three and a four and if i quit yakking then it goes okay okay i will teach you that stuff too i'll i'll teach you what that's called right now as a matter of fact no time like the present this is what's called a hammer-on. You have one note here, so that's our second note. One, two, or A note. Now we're gonna go to the B, but we have to, it's called a hammer-on. And I'm gonna use my third finger for this, or second, whatever works for you guys, okay? I'm gonna use third to demonstrate it. You play once with your pick, and you actually hammer your finger onto that fret. Not on top of it, but where it's supposed to go, okay? Watch my strumming hand. So you only pick once with your pick, but that happens. You hammered it on there. So it's hard to get used to, but once you get used to it, you'll be doing it all the time. You'll do it on every string. And with the opposite of it, after you hammer it on, let's do it back here. It's called a pull-off, okay? You see, I still hit the note once. Then when I pulled it off, it made an, another note. It, it actually played the note back here, the A. That's because I picked it down, just like my, my guitar, my pick or my plectrum, depending on where you're from. If you're overseas in England or not in the United States, it's probably called a plectrum. But if you're in the USA, we just call it a pick, <laughs> which is not a nice name in other languages for some reason. I have been informed, but I don't live there, so it's not a bad name. It means a pick. Okay, so we have hammer on, which means you only pick it once, but you hammer on your finger. Then if you pull off, you pick it once, then you actually pull down and actually use it just like the pick here, but down at this end. So you actually just pluck it down. So. That's hammer-ons and pull-offs. You can practice that way. Then you could be Eddie Van Halen. like you could do that on these oh yeah you don't limit your creativity <laughs> creativity is fun okay so again you can do that 
to start off with. Two and a three and a four. Now the thing is, now that I showed you that, just on the G string, I know I showed you all this other stuff, but it's going to come in handy here in about two more minutes. Um, let's go to the C. One, a two, and a three, and a four. That's no fun, is it? we got to put some fingers somewhere. You can put them anywhere, but again, you can use whatever fingers you have, but you're using your first fingered bar, B-A-R-R-E, across to make your C chord. But now you got the next two frets that you can use any fingers you want, and you can play a note anywhere you want. And you can do what we were doing. One and a two, and three and a four, and a one. And see, I'm using my third finger, and the fourth, meaning my ring finger or my pinky. But you can play anywhere, and same way with the D when you get there eventually. Now you have to actually skip over that F, this weird one. Okay, because we're used to going between all these really long ones. And now we have to skip over one, okay, for this D. Now skip over it, so you got the same amount of space like this, these are long ones. Otherwise, you'll hear that it's wrong. You hear that? So you'll know you're supposed to go up one more, but that's that weird F sharp place. That's the only place where things can sound weird. But they put it there, like I said, for that. And for. Because <laughs> it has to be there. Who, you know, who would want to play music without that stuff? Okay, so at D again, you'll go D here. Then skip over a fret. Okay, so this can happen on every single string. Okay, so here's where we get to having fun. Do the exact same thing, but just simply have fun with it. Make up your own things that sound good. Okay, so if you're going G, two and a three and a four and a one, get out of that boring routine after you have it down and just try other notes in place of them. And you can play one and a two and a three and a four, one. So that's on the other G string, so it'll be doing the exact same thing, just higher pitched since it's still a G string. Now, here's a cool thing. Again, I'm getting ahead of myself, but then again, who cares? No rules, just guidelines. Check it out. I went all the way up here. So you can do that on that string. Can we do it on the next string, on this D string? Let's find out. If you like the sound of it, I don't much, but on the next G string we ought to be able to because it's the same string as the other G string, so we ought to be able to go. Then Okay, so you can do hammer on. And pull offs. So hammer on and pull offs to whatever your imagination wants to do with them. So you see that, you can do whatever. Same here. That's a nice one where you go open on the D string, the middle one, then to the next fret, then the next fret, then up to your G string. That sounds really good. As a, as a hammer on from open to there, then another hammer on. I did three. One, two, three. Then finally hit the G string up. So whatever sounds good to you, because you know you could play all 
of the notes on all of the strings on these two frets and on the G string, either one, we know we can do this fret, this fret, and the next one, and the next one. So the first four frets are safe for the G string while we're playing the G chord. We can even play both at the same time, both G strings on the second fret. That's where you got to really make sure you get that train track thing going on your fingers right because that middle string still has to be ringing. Neither one of those two fingers can be touching it. Okay. Okay, so you can add all that in while thinking one and a two and a three and a four and a four and then okay so i'm just using the hammer on on the d string second string with my second finger then hitting the g string up twice two more times second fret pull off then the second or, sorry the second string again, pull off, and then hit the G again. So, or you can get fancy. <laughs> okay, so you can see where we're going. Now you get to do these, see, um, on all the different chords. So we have G, and you can add little things as you get comfortable. Of course, I'm very comfortable with it, so I keep flying away from you, but I want you to be able to keep rewinding, or going back, I should say. Rewinding was back in my hippie days. Um, but So go backwards, and just add a couple notes, maybe. It's always safe just to go to that first fret. So add in. You can go all four frets on those G strings, either one. Okay, use more than one finger down here. See, I'm using three fingers now. One, two, three fingers. You can even go up more. to C. Same thing. Start by just using the next fret. And But you can play on all strings. And you can play the whole chords while you're just holding down one string with your barred note. So you don't always have to be going that kind of thing. So try all kinds of things. You can add it down.
I thought I might be able to make it up. <laughs> Favor the shotgun. Okay, okay, and you're gonna do the same thing on the next one for your D. Play other notes on the next fret. But here's where again, if we're gonna play, we can't play on the next fret. We can play the first fret after it on the D. But the next one's that evil F sharp fret. Don't want to do that, so you have to skip it. That's the only one you have to skip. Everything else is fair game. Just skip that unless you're doing one of the other things I showed you for now. You'll find out how that works. So that takes some work to get those fingers stretched out there, and all of them have to do that. Keep doing the tunnel. This one's a bar, so it can't be a tunnel. All the other ones have to be tunnels. So if you're playing full chords like this, and playing at the top, like G string. See, I made a mistake and went to that F sharp fret. If you're not doing the tunnel, and you have it flattened out, it'd go, It'll do that, so you'll know that, oh, got to do my tunnel. Okay, so that's how you get those, okay? So work on a bunch of that, come right back, and I'm going to show you one more thing, and then we shall wrap it up, and then you can be off on your own and have no problem, okay? So practice up on all that fun stuff. You can do a week before you come back on this one, okay? So catch you in just a second, or a week. <laughs> Okay, we're back. I just had a drink of tea. Spilled it on me. <laughs> right there it is. I'm sloppy. Well, I'm a man or a boy or whatever, so we never grow up, so I'll just call myself a boy. Um, so we're always sloppy. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to show you is another way to play a chord, which means more than one note played together, so two notes or three notes. So we're going to play three notes played together. I'm going to show you a different way to play the D chord. Okay, so we have G still. Okay, now I'm going to totally fry your mind. I'm going to fry your mind. I'm going to teach you a way to play the C chord and the D chord differently. And then you have different options with your other fingers. Okay, so instead of going G is still the same. C, which was here. Okay. Now, you've, you've had all your fun with that C. You can just put one finger right here on the middle string, or on the D string. And that's actually a C chord. <laughs> okay. It honestly is. If you just put one finger there, any finger, put your first finger there. Try to get it in there. Okay. My finger is almost too big. If yours is too big, get it out there. Okay, but if you have it there, you have to major railroad or choo-choo train track or tunnel that one. Then you can actually put a finger down here. Okay. Okay, that's how we're going to do the D. So it's the same thing. So because we had this. So we're doing open, then the next fret, with a finger on it, and then open on the next G string. So open G string, then we're playing on the first fret with whatever finger you care to, what works, whatever works for you. You can change it later if you don't like it. Uh, I'll use the third one this time. So on your D string, do it at the first fret, then open G. So both, both strings open G, but we have the fretted finger, any finger on the first fret of that middle string, the D string. And you can see what notes work with it. But try to keep it there. Now if we're going to do a D, just like we did here, it just goes up one more. Okay, so we're just going to move that one finger up to the next fret. 
but we have to do the same thing here where those two G's were open. Now we got to bring both of those up one fret. So we have to bar across the first fret and then put a finger in the middle on the D string. So we got first fret, second fret with the choo-choo train tunnel. And then the other one, since it's barred across both G strings, will be top and bottom string, should be that, and the middle string. So that's another way to play them. So you could do like G and C, back to G, to D. Okay. So that's just another way of doing it. So work with that with all the other chords. You're like, what are the chords? Well, um, let's do, like let's say, let's find some other ones that are gonna work really well. Let's go up to, mm, let's see, I'm gonna find one that I like. Let's see, we got G, we got A, Try. I like that one too. Let's see. I don't like that either. Let's do... I'm just looking around seeing what I want to play. <laughs> okay. Um, so there, and then two frets. Let's see, five frets. Okay, one, one, two, three, four, five. Let's do way up here in C. You know where C is at. It's right here where those two are together. So we're going to go, um, and I'll give you some hints. Of, I'll actually tell you what chords go together really well, and then you can figure them out because you know it's just G, then we go A, B, C, D, E, F, F sharp, stupid thing, and then G again, and then A, B. So you can find them. So we're going to start from C. Now, when you're looking for a three chord song um, in C, we're going to have to use C, F, and G. C, F, G. Wow. Okay. So, we have to find those. We already know where C is. Now, how do we find F? Well, you can do one of two things. You can count all the way up from C, D, E, F. Okay, so it's right there. Right at the first of those clumped up frets. So that's F, F sharp, and then back to G. So we got C. We just figured out F is going to be the first of these clumped up frets here. And if you, you don't want F sharp, just go straight to G. So C, F, G. And you can do everything the same. Just like before, play all the notes you want within there. So you can keep on climbing on up just like before. So we have C, F, C, G, See, I'm doing same as here because we are in G. Now we're back in G up here. So same thing. <laughs> you can do them all. Same thing as here. So you got. And same thing here. They're just harder. Harder to push down. Okay? So, that's C, F, and G. But again, remember, you can do the other way. C was here. Remember before how we did G, and we just added one finger in the middle to make the C instead of going up to here? And then we barred one ahead, put the one in the middle, and made a D. Well, I just showed it to you a minute ago. We could do the same thing for all of these and make it real simple. This here's why I showed it to you. 
because you can do it anywhere. Watch this. You can go here, C, and then just put one finger in the middle of it. That's F. Now take everything and move it up to the next fret. That's G. Back to F. Now C. So C, F, G. It's just a different way to do it. Instead of sounding like this, it sounds like this. So it's two different ways to play them. So that, you can use that for everything. Just play it that way. C, put one finger in the middle. F, take the whole thing, move it up. One, G, back to, okay. Pretty groovy, huh? Okay, so um, a lot of things um, you can get online and just look up um, some of your favorite stuff. Like there's a A to Z lyrics.com and it will actually tell you the chords that are in your favorite songs. And I find one that have the uh, chords that you know how to play because the, all those have the words there. And you just look that up again, it's like a to z lyrics.com or lyrics a to z if you just put on lyrics and <laughs> hit enter on your computer you'll probably just find it but it's called a to z i think a with a line or a dash and then a z lyrics l y r i c s l y r i c s weird spelling that's how you do it um but that or any place where it has words to songs, it'll also have the chords written right above the word where the chord changes to a different chord. It'll tell you what chord you go to. So when you learn all your chords, which is very easy to do on these, you can go to those and play every song you've ever heard on this. And most of them are going to be three chords. If Usually if you're a guy, they're usually three chords. If you're a girl, it might have ten chords. I'm serious. Girl songs have lots of chords in them. <laughs> but look on there, because most of them will just be like G and then C, then G, then D. G, then C, then G, then D, and G, and C, and G, and D, and G. Again, you know everything can be played, any notes on all, all these frets. All the way up. <laughs> on all the G notes. Okay, so it's a lot of cool, easy stuff. Again, the middle note is always your weird one, but on these G notes, those are the ones you can really go everywhere. With the middle note, or the middle string, it's usually just like a two fret thing. So you go to open, then to like the G string. If you have it barred down, like here at the C, it's going to be the same thing. So like the middle string would be, you can still do two frets. Then go to the high G string again. So again, the G string, you can go everywhere. <laughs> okay, so uh, once again, Scott Grove. Dr. Groovy needs to learn not to spill his tea at GroovyMusicLessons.com. Groovy spelled just like that. G-R-O-O-V-Y. There's no E in there. GroovyMusicLessons.com. Uh, tons, over, well over a hundred free lessons on there. How do, you, how do you know how to find that? You go to GroovyMusicLessons.com, look on the left hand side, go down to where it says free lessons. <laughs> click that and you can learn how to play the guitar, the electric guitar, the acoustic, the bass guitar, mandolin, banjo, all kinds of stuff. You can learn how to play harmonicas, all kinds of free lessons, so go check them out. Okay, so once again, I hope you enjoyed starting playing the strum stick. There are so many other instruments that are just like this, that have the three strings and the frets in the same place. Okay, so if you look up, and find another instrument where you see one fret there, one fret there, then there. So you match it up to the picture or match it up to the video. One, then a long one, 
then a long one, then these little short ones. Okay, so there's a few instruments they call, you know, dulcimers and things like that, where they're actually the same instrument. It's just, you don't hang them on your neck. You play them on your lap. You can just lay this one on your lap and play it that way, too. Just put your fingers straight down on top of it and play it that way, if you wish. It's, it's your instrument. Play it how you want. Again, I just gave you some basic uh, guidelines, and you're the, you're the musician, so it's all about uh, just a way to express yourself. That's all music is. Don't let anybody tell you how to play your music, but it never, never hurts to get a little head start like this, that's for sure. Then the rest is up to you. If you feel like you need some more instruction, uh, you can ask me to make another one that picks up where this left off, and I'll be happy to. If not, be on your merry way. Create some cool music that both of us would like to listen to. Once again, you guys be groovy, and I will catch you later. All right? Peace out. <laughs>